Technical video today, let's scan a Porsche 964. Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Thanks a lot for tuning in today. And today we are in Bangkok and we have the chance to scan a Porsche 964. Yes, you heard me right, that's a classic Porsche, but it's really a good example to show you what we're doing in the background, even with some of our supercars, it's basically the same procedure we're talking about engineering, 3D engineering, and in today's case, reverse engineering. Now, while we're building up this scene here in the video, let me say just a few words what this is all about. Basically, in the, a long time ago, when we were talking about creating a new part or even modifying an existing part, we had to use an artist, we had to use our hand and something like clay, basically a very flexible material. Let's say you want to make a brand new bumper for a Ferrari, Back in the old time, let's say uh, Ferrari F360, we basically would have used an original F360 bumper and would have used clay on top of that car and modified the shape. Uh, and we also, of course, we would have to cut some parts away if the, the, if the new design would require that. But that's how we would have worked, uh, let's say 10 or 20 years ago. And of course, nowadays, this is all totally different, but I really would like just to say a few words about this so we have a better understanding of what the difference is to nowadays. So once we would have finished the design back then, we would still would need to go into production and the only way to do that would be to make a mold on top around of that new product. So basically think a bit about it like a negative image. Let's say here's your new bumper and you form another mold completely around that new bumper which then when you open it, creates a negative mold. I'm gonna to try to show you some photos here in the video as well. And that mold would then be able to produce the newly shaped bumper. Now, obviously there's a couple of advantages, but also disadvantages about that method. First of all is accuracy. Uh, whenever you work with an existing part, the new part is based on another part. Um, but when you work with clay, there's always a certain error frame that come up. We're talking about 1mm, 2mm, up to who knows what kind of final production you're using on that mold. Um, another way is time. It really takes a lot of time to do this kind of mold. No matter what the new material is made of, when you work on an existing bumper, it takes time. Another big disadvantage is that you're going to lose an OEM part that's pretty expensive. So when we're talking about Ferrari, Lamborghini parts, and you have to Let's say you clay on them, you might be able to take the old bumper underneath back out again. But I would say 90% of the cases when you make a new design, it's not just adding on top of it, but you also have to cut something away. Let's say you wanna have a bigger air channel opening at the front, come on. Then of course you would have need to cut something and that is very pricey and also hurts the heart of many enthusiasts. So uh, anyway, that was the old time. So about, I would say about 10 years ago, DMC started to using 3D technology. Now, what's that all about? If you know that already, then you can just enjoy looking at the video here today, but I'm just gonna stay, still say a few words about it. But this is gonna be a series where we, go, where, we go, where we are gonna take you through the process of creating such a part. So we really hope you enjoy this kind of uh, behind the scenes video. 3D technology, basically think about it um, as uh, taking a photo, but not in 2D, photos are two-dimensional, right? You can only look at them like this, but in 3D. In order to do this, we need to capture the image three-dimensional with a so-called 3D scanner. And this is the first step in this kind of uh, procedure. And this is what we're doing here today. We were very lucky to have our partner, 911 Assistant here in Bangkok, Thailand. And uh, they said, we have a 964 here and they're actually looking to reproduce or modify uh, some of the doors, whether it's for lightweight or for design purpose. We're not going into details here at this moment. Um, they were really awesome guys and let us do the scan here. And um, so it's, it's a really good chance to show you how the whole thing works. If you look at the picture here, yes, there's a 964 at the background, but there's also the two doors here at the front. You can see they're white color. And um, these are the items that we're trying to scan here today. Now, before we can actually do a scan, there's a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, a 3D scanner typically works with light or laser, which is projected onto the image. Uh, when I say light, when I say laser, it's really exactly that, but it's not just one light image, but 
the light image also contains certain textures. So let's say, take an easy example, let's say there's a laser line or a light line projected on a plane image, it's going to show up like a straight line. But once the image has a little, little curve, then the line is also going to have a curve which is projected onto that image. And that's why when the camera of the 3D scanner captures that image, then it knows how three-dimensional this is. Now, on top of that, uh, before jumping too much here, uh, we also need a very matte surface if possible. Glossy surfaces work sometimes, but really because of the reflection issue, uh, it is much better to have a matte surface. Um, if you don't have a matte surface, don't worry, there's actually a very cool uh, powder spray. I'm not sure about the exact name in English. We'll try to blend in some more details here. and. Um, Basically, I'm trying to blend this in here as well, or maybe it's gonna come later in the video. You're gonna spray this powder onto any surface that you would like to capture into your 3D day computer data. And the nice thing about this kind of powder coating spray, it's, it's removable very easy. So after you're done with the scanning, you can just take a cloth, wet or dry, and just take the powder off. It's very, very nice. Now, let's say uh, we did all that, then we need to capture the part. Now there's two ways, basically more than two ways to do it, but um, traditionally we are, we are talking about two different kind of scanners, 3D scanners. There's more as I said, but let me just uh, to keep it a little bit uh, more simple for this first video, we can go more into details later, talk about these two. There is a, a fixed scanner and a mobile scanner. A fixed scanner is sitting on a tripod similar like your camera, um, or if, if you if you have seen anybody taking photos the scanner is sitting on there now the thing is if the scanner is fixed you need to move the object right because you want to have the object not just from one side but you want to move the object so that all the three-dimensional data can be captured into the computer that can be done if you have a rather small part and um, let's say you have a small part like an like an engine you could set up a scanner and then you put the engine in front of the scanner and under the engine you maybe put some sort of rotating disc so that you can slowly move the engine in front of the scanner but then you still have the problem that if the object is heavy you can only ro uh, rotate it around the x-axis but not ar around the y or z-axis because again let's keep in mind we want to capture all angles all areas of the object in 3d that's why the more modern approach is to use a mobile scanner as the one I'm using here in this video. Think of it as a very modern mixture of a 3D scanner that I just mentioned and an iPhone times 10. When I say iPhone, I mean it because it's an object which has a lot of sensors inside. There's a gyroscope, there's like... Uh, so basically, whenever I move the scanner left or right, the scanner knows that I'm moving into that direction and adjusts the computational data that all the images that he's capturing, he adjusts that based on the angle that I'm doing. I can also move it like this and like that, up and down, he all knows that. Plus, he's still doing the light projection that we mentioned before. So we have a really awesome mix of being able to project the, the line or even in our case, a texture onto the image. Plus, we can move around the object very, very freely. And that's exactly what we're doing here today with the Porsche 964 doors. After we applied the matte surface, we can basically start scanning. Our scanner is here is connected to this very powerful computer that you can see. In my case, it's a laptop because I love laptops. Oh, obviously, it's movable. What's, what's the point of uh, having a very awesome mobile scanner, but you have to connect it to a, to a fixed PC? Um, that's why I suggest anybody who's interested in this kind of topic, choose a very powerful notebook. For example, a gaming notebook. Uh, but there's even more powerful laptops than that. Now, before you start scanning, you need to align the scanner. What, is, what does that mean? Think of it a, a bit like your iPhone when you first time use it or you have used it a couple of times and you, you notice that your, the compass in your iPhone is off. Sometimes you have to move it like this in an H, A chip. Um, maybe you've done it before, maybe not. Sometimes this is necessary. Basically, let the scanner know this is a flat surface in front of us and now you're not moving. And this is how you can do a ground alignment of the scanner. Uh, the scanning software shows you an image, what it's capturing. If you are satisfied with the result, then you can start scanning. Now, 
what the scanner does before I said there are sensors inside there's a light projector but there's also a camera inside every second there's a number of images 3d images captured by the scanner now when you move around the object sometimes it can happen that you move too fast or too sudden which can create an error so the image which is captured in the computer seems to be slightly off or sometimes even duplicates let's say in our case here when i'm trying to capture the side mirror of the 964 side door suddenly it can happen that in the image in the computer there's two side mirrors that's what we call a scan error but that's all okay because what we have to do later in the video and we're going to make another video about that actually but just tell you a little bit about it right now we have to do an alignment because i just mentioned every second there's a lot of images captured some of them might be misaligned that's why it appears that there's two side mirrors even though there's only one so later what we have to do we have to go back to the computer do a post processing and then align all the captured images so that they can come back together again but stay tuned for that we're going to do another video about that later so for now right now i hope it's not too boring uh, welcome for me welcome for you guys to have a look at this and i really hope you like what we're doing here as I said before, also, this is basically the same process today we are doing on a classic 964 Porsche. We love Porsches, we love classic Porsches, air-cooled, you know, we've, we've been doing quite a lot of projects recently about air-cooled Porsches. We've done the seats, we've done the full carbon fiber body for 993. So this is something we continue doing, but the procedure of the 3D scanning and post-processing in the computer is the same what we're also doing with the other supercars, say whether it's a Lamborghini, Ferrari, even an Audi or AMG products is all exactly the same. And that's really wonderful. So as some finishing words, if you remember just now in the beginning, I spoke to you about how it really happened in the beginning, where we came from using clay on an existing object and now going to this high technology is really an awesome process and it's just so fun to do. And if you're interested in that, welcome to watch more, welcome to give us a like on this video and we will try to upload more content like this. Um, if you did like this video I just mentioned already, please leave us a like um, or give us a thumbs up depending on the platform where you're watching this. Give us a subscribe, that would be really awesome, that helps us a lot. Leave some comments what you liked and what you didn't like so we can improve and give you a better content in the future. So let me say one more time, thank you for watching today and I hope to see you again soon with more DMC content. Until then, DMC Life.